Okay, uh, just briefly, uh, could you let uh, my listeners who might not be familiar with you, uh, sure, sure, you, uh, with what you're doing, your work? Sure, of course. Uh, so if you guys play video games right now, you can hear me as Faust in Guilty Gear Strive. Uh, if you watch anime, uh, you can hear me as Satoru Gojo in Jujutsu Kaisen. And if you enjoy the Yakuza series, uh, you can hear me as Ichiban Kasuga in Yakuza Like a Dragon. Uh, I do want to talk about Jujutsu Kaisen. Mm -hmm. um, huge, obviously. Just this <laughs> massive fan response to this. When you signed up to do this show, I mean, were you surprised at all by those like this I, incredible mainstream response it's received? I, I sort of was, yeah, because you know, like it, it, you you don't really like you as, as an actor, you get like a, a big inbox of like auditions, and you maybe don't have the time to like fully in depth research each one as you're trying to get them out, right? So when I, when Jujutsu Kaisen came across my desk, I was like, okay, um, anime from the studio I worked with before. Uh, let's see the character rundown real quick. So. You know, I, I, I got a little bit of info from a friend of mine. I kind of read like a manga panel or two, and then I did the audition. But I, it wasn't until after I got the character that, that I realized, I was like, oh, oh crap, people really like this show. <laughs> people really like this character. Wow. I guess I can't suck, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, was it that sort of pressure at that point? Um, you know, like that the, the pressure is always I I feel like it's a similar pressure across the board for, for any of because no matter what the popularity of show is, as an actor you should always start to do the very best you can, right? So because you're always trying to please whatever audience really enjoys the product and they deserve like your full, you know, one hundred percent in the role, no matter what it is. Um at, if if you're asking me like if I found out that Satoru Gojo was going to be like super popular, um, yeah, sure, there was a little bit of like, <laughs> oh man, man, I hope I did him justice afterwards. But uh, you know, I, I watched the first season. I think it turned out okay, so um, I can stop sweating yeah. at this point. Maybe <laughs> if I may, uh, yeah, you know, um, I hope you don't mind the tag. Of course, of course. Um, you said you've done video games as well. Is, mm -hmm. is there a particular difference between? voice acting for video games than it is for something like anime. And oh yes, a um, absolutely. Um, so there's, uh, there's, you know, the lip flattage for anime right. is very difficult for any actor to come in to adjust to, right? Because when you're when you're acting, what you want to do is, what you want to have is the freedom to portray the story and your emotions and to get it across. For anime, you have that in like this box, right? So you have this amount of time to fit in all your emotions and make someone feel, but you also have to do it when they're flapping their mouth in that rhythm, right? So it's extremely difficult. It's actually the hardest form of voiceover I've ever worked on. I've done narration, I've done movies, I've done video games. Uh, anime is consistently, it takes the most skill to pull off okay, right? It takes more skill to make it sound okay than it does for a video game to make it sound good. Because video games generally, you don't have to worry about the lip flaps, you can just act, right? Um, but uh, another big difference is for video games, generally there's a lot of yelling. You know, anime, you know, we all see, like, the big battle scenes and stuff, but that's, like, one, two episodes in a row, maybe, and then there's, like, story, right? Sure. Video games, so much combat, all the time, yelling, 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 yelling. Um, generally, we put the video game stuff toward the end of the week so we don't, like, blow ourselves out. Uh, that being said, uh, I know quite a few years ago there was this big hop up in regards to voice actors like yourself mm -hmm. who did work in video games, uh, kind of... It, going to the voice actors guild, I think it is, yeah. uh, saying, "Hey, we want extra compensation because we could, in essence, lose a whole mess of work yeah. from doing what we do in video games. It affects us, especially with the well-known characters that you've done in the past." So yeah, so that, what that was all about was um, it's it, it was yes that we wanted extra compensation, but it was also for things like for example when we do mocap motion capture for for video games and we put on the suit with the, like the balls and stuff right. Before we had that strike, there was no safety person on set. Uh, for actors, right? Yeah. These are not trained stunts people that they hire. They, they hire the voice actors, they hire like other actors, and sometimes you have to fall off stuff. You have to like do these dangerous physical things in, in the mocap series. So, you know, people are getting hurt and there was no one to really turn to. So we were like, okay, this needs to change. We need to have safety regulations for our job. We need to be able to know that we won't cough up blood at the end of a four hour session. We need to know we're not gonna break our arm falling off this mocap stage. Uh, so that was, you know, there was a lot of things in that strike yeah. that we were asking for. So uh, I do want to go back to anime real yeah, quick. Course, course. Um, since uh, you were the voice of Guts in <laughs> uh, the most recent Berserk anime, mm -hmm. and obviously with the unfortunate death of the creator, this sort of means yeah. we are not going to be getting any more Berserk. Or it's, I would say, unlikely anyone else would pick it up. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, if you could just take a minute and reflect on 
your involvement with such an influential franchise? Um, it was it was an honor. I, I consider it an extreme honor to have um, been been a part of that world. And and yeah, it's it's such a it was devastating when we heard the news because me and my wife are just huge Berserk fans, and we every year we we, we, we would hope that you know like the the guy would make it and and, and finish the series and and he would uh, recover and be be in good health, you know. Um, and unfortunately, that did not come to pass. Uh, but having been a part of uh, a series that he helped bring to life is is a huge honor, and I will carry that privilege with me uh, for the rest of my life. Excellent. Uh, they are giving us the sort of wrap it up signals outside. So uh, I guess one last question for sure. you is: Is there anything you can tell us about that you can actually tell us about right now? Uh, uh, I, I know the NDAs of our. When, 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 is this, when is this coming out? Uh, I'm not sure about her, but uh, this will probably be within the next few weeks. Yeah. A few weeks. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I, um, so whatever you can I'm, legally. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So you can't. You can't tell him. But by the time this this airs, by the time you hear this, you can hear me on the Netflix version of Shaman King Ooh. Uh, as uh, Midamaru. Awesome. Yes. So and please check that out. Any quick words for any up and coming? Uh, voice actors that are out there or kids that want to be voice actors. Yeah, for promote. sure. I mean, look, it's a great job. Uh, it's it's tough to break in for sure, but right now is actually the best time to do it because because of COVID, our entire industry has moved to a record from home situation. So no matter where you are in the United States, no matter where you are in the world, you can book jobs from Los Angeles or New York or Texas right now. So if you want to get started in voiceover, now's the time to do it. Thank you Thank so you much so for much. your time. Of course.